Okay, so we're going to be looking at conditional statements. That's statements of the form if p then q or p arrow q here. This means this means if p then q, meaning if p is true, then q is true. But as we're going to see, it's not quite that simple. There are some sort of subtleties that usually trip people up, and so we're going to go go over these. The cardinal rule with this is that what tells the story of the of the logical expression, the conditional statement in this case, is the truth table, not the way that we think about it when we we use words like if and then in everyday in everyday language. So that can help guide our intuition about these things, and we'll talk about it in those ways. But the important thing is the truth table. The, the truth table has the the final word. And why is that? Well, let's actually let's actually start drawing the truth table for p then q here. That's because the truth table was was decided upon by people for a reason. We want we want these truth tables to have uh, or these expressions to have what's called a particular truth functionality. We want them to be true under certain conditions for a reason, and we'll talk about that as we go. So it's not it's not that we're figuring out what the truth table should be from what the words mean. We are deciding what the truth table is because we want this thing to work in a certain way. So when we do a truth table for two propositions, P and Q have to be propositions. They can be either true or false uh, in order for, for us to be doing logic with them. Um, I have four rows, true, true for uh, P, and then true, false for Q, false, false for P, and then true, false for P. And if this is at all confusing, uh, please go and take a look at the truth table video to see in, in great detail how to do this. Um, and the key for this is that, so I'm going to put the true true for P here and move this a little bit up so it lines up. Um, and then the false, false. And now if I start putting in the values for for true, for uh, Q, I actually know immediately, I know immediately that the statement, the statement is going to be true here. If P is false, the statement is automatically true. How did I know that? We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but now I can start putting in values for Q, true. This is actually the only line on which Q is, or on which the statement is false. P is true, Q is false, or Q is, pink is my false color. P is true, Q is false, so the statement is false. Up here, P was true, Q was true, so the statement was true. Down here, P was false, so the statement was automatically true, and it didn't matter what Q was. If Q was true, or the statement was false, or uh, sorry, if Q is true or if Q is false, the statement will be true. And this is why this is sometimes called the material conditional. If you if you read about the material conditional, that's what this specifically refers to. This idea that the only way for this thing to be true is, or you know, and the only way in for the in order for P then Q to be false, P has to be true and Q has to be false in no other way. And the reason is we typically say, think about this as a promise, right? So I'm promising that if P is true, then Q will be true. And the truth value of the of the proposition, the, of the statement, P then Q, is telling you whether or not the promise was broken, right? If, if uh, P is true and Q is true, I didn't break the promise. If P is true and Q is false, did break the promise. I promised that whenever P was true, Q would also be true. If P is false, promise is not broken. Why? It was never made. I'm only promising that if P is true, then Q will, will happen. Right? Q will be true as well. This is called a conditional because I'm saying that Q will happen on the condition that P happens. Right? If P happens, Q happens. That's why we sometimes, uh, not sometimes, very often we say that P is sufficient for Q. P causes Q. Right? If P happens, then Q must happen. We also, and this is what we'll talk about uh, next when we talk about equivalent statements, equivalent logical expressions, Q is necessary for P. Um, very quickly, because you might see this come up, uh, P is called the antecedent of the statement, and Q is called the consequent of the statement. Probably won't come up too much, but if you ever see this, that's what it means. It could save you some trouble when you're reading a textbook or, or a document or something like that. And there are common logical fallacies affirming the consequent, or sorry, denying denying the consequent, affirming the you know, affirming the consequent, denying the antecedent. We'll talk about those in depth. We we sometimes need to know these terms. Okay. But more importantly, for our purposes, we need to know some equivalent, some equivalent expressions. And by the way, just sorry, one more word about this before we move on. 
people people wonder why this is true right this really trips people up why is it why is uh why are these two true why is the statement true when the uh when p is false if if i'm talking about something if i say you know if um if you um i don't know if you if you buy if i buy a new car i'll take you for a ride in it say i, I say that if then right if this happens then that will happen um and suppose i don't buy a new car is it true that that if I buy a new car, I'll take you for a ride? Well, most people say we don't know, right? In order to find out, you have to actually buy the car and then see whether or not I take you for a ride in it. Um, so this doesn't work in what we call our idiomatic English. It's, it's not the same way that we mean the statement, if something, then something, which is why I said we have to be very, very careful about this or it will lead us astray. Um, the reason the reason for this truth functionality is that in applications, in things like computer science, um, you will have some, some conditions which if they are met, you want something to happen and you want to be alerted if that thing doesn't happen. So you might be writing a program or uh, some code or de designing some software where if the user inputs something, then the program is supposed to do something. And you want to know if that if that if the user inputs this, whatever it is, you want to know that the program did what it's supposed to do. And if the user makes that input and it doesn't do that, you want to be alerted. You want a statement which is going to return false which is going to let you know that something went wrong and you need to go and check it. If the user doesn't doesn't put that input, you want you want everything to be true. You don't want any alerts. You don't want to get a, a false returned. So so it's very, it's much more functional. It's much better for for actual applications uh, when we have this truth functionality that it's only going to tell you something is, that that something is false. It's only going to sort of raise the alarm so to speak if the precondition is true. And the post condition is is false. Okay, so that in mind, let's move on to the equivalent statements. Equivalent.